For Jose Fernandez joined the Florida Marlins as a first round pick in the 2011 MLB Draft and won the Rookie of the Year award and made it to the MLB All-Star Games in both 2013 and 2016 before he would break off his engagement to former Miami Marlins cheerleader Carla Mendoza ending their three year relationship and go on to start a new relationship with Maria Arias who at the time of this recording is pregnant with their daughter. Before he would tragically lose his life in a boating accident off the coast of Miami Beach on September 25th, 2016. As a young teen, Cuban born Jose Fernandez spent months in a prison with a serial murder as his cellmate. He was hit with the sentence after three unsuccessful attempts to escape from the island. But it did little to deter young Jose. His fourth and final attempt to get out of Cuba was successful, but during the journey in a rickety boat over turbulent waters, his mother fell overboard. He would eventually become a rising star in Major League Baseball but was plagued with a turbulent love life and would describe his first months in America as worse than his time in a dirty Cuban prison. Sadly, on September 25, 2016, the US Coast Guard found that he and two others had passed away from the impact of a boat crash. I'm Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Jose Fernandez prior to his untimely death here for you on Before They Were Dead. Now, news of this tragedy that took the life of the young Marlins pitcher is still very fresh. So, um, well, please feel free to leave your thoughts and your prayers for the departed in the comments down below. Fernandez was born in Santa Clara, Cuba on July 31st, 1992. He and his half-sister Yadines Jimenez was raised by his mother Martinez and stepfather Raymond Jimenez. He was also very close with his grandmother Olga Fernandez. How close were they? Well, after Jose made it as a baseball player, he would send his grandmother gifts from America including mattresses, cell phones, an air conditioner, plasma TVs, and a radio, which she would listen to all of his games on. In a tweet, he would even describe her as the love of his life. As luck would have it, Jose would happen to grow up living on the same street as another future MLB player, Cardinal shortstop Aldemus Diaz, whose father and uncle encouraged Jose to play. Jose and Aldemus then ended up playing on the same youth baseball team, and both would decide this was what they wanted to do for the rest of their lives. But to become a ball player, young Jose knew he would have to show how he got to America. Now, this was long before Obama began normalizing US and Cuban relations, and the only way a Cuban could ever get to America was to sneak off the island via raft or boat and then get themselves on US soil and not get caught. Jose's stepfather Ramon was the first to make the voyage. He settled down in Tampa after successfully getting out of Cuba back in 2005. Jose, his sister, and his mother tried to follow soon after, but things didn't exactly go according to plan. Jose failed to defect three times. After each attempt, he was thrown into prison. He spent months locked up with a guy who had killed seven people. But young Jose, he was undeterred. In 2007, Jose finally escaped from Cuba on a small boat with his sister and his mother. When their vessel hit choppy waves, his mother fell overboard, and Jose bravely dove into the water to rescue her. The three landed in Mexico before joining Raymond in Tampa Bay. Now safe and sound in the land of the free, 15 year old Jose's problems were finally over or so you would think. Adapting to American customs and culture was extremely difficult for him. At the time, he couldn't speak English and even the smallest things confused him. He recalled getting yelled at for throwing a gum wrapper on the street, when in Cuba he used to litter all the time. He didn't know how to use cell phones or computers and his classmates at Braulio Alonzo High School were constantly laughing at him. Plus, he missed his grandma, who they had to leave behind in Santa Clara. Because if mom fell overboard, well, just imagine what could have happened to Granny. Jose described the problems he faced this way. I felt so helpless, overwhelmed. I've never felt anything worse than my first few months here. Jail felt better than all that. The escape Jose had from his troubles during this time was baseball. He played on his school team and was part of the Florida 6A state championship in his sophomore and senior seasons. The Cincinnati Reds offered to sign him as an international free agent with a $1.3 million signing bonus before the Florida Marlins selected him in the first round 2011 MLB draft and gave him an even better signing bonus of $2 million. The American dream, it definitely came true. There were high hopes for Jose as he began his rookie season with the Marlins in 2013, but Jose would have to confront a new kind of culture shock in his rookie season. After hitting his first major league home run, his celebration was deemed too, well, you know, out there for professional baseball by Atlanta Braves catcher Brian McCann, who chewed him out after the incident. Chris Johnson seemed pretty pissed too. He stood at the plate and watched, I understand that. 
apologized and said, I feel like I don't deserve to be here. I'm embarrassed and hopefully that will never happen again. But Jose adapted and excelled. He was selected to play on the National League All-Star team and pitched the perfect sixth inning in the 2013 All-Star game. He won the National League Rookie of the Year award and his strikeout rate was the highest in the league. To top it off, he also finally had a chance to reunite with his grandmother on November 10, 2013. For Carla Mendoza, they tried to keep the relationship a secret as it violated club rules, but somehow the cat got out of the bag and Carla would quit the Marlins cheerleading squad to continue dating Jose and the two were engaged to get wed. In 2014, Jose tore a ligament in his right elbow and the injury would have him out of commission for more than a year. After a successful Tommy John surgery, he returned to the field on July 2nd, 2015, but it wasn't long before a strain in his bicep had him benched once again until September of that year. He received his American citizenship that year and by 2016, he had recovered from his injury well enough to play in the MLB All-Star Game once again. But his personal life was getting a little bit rocky. His relationship with Carla ended and he would begin dating Maria Arias, who was due to deliver Jose's daughter. He wanted to name that daughter Penelope when she would be born in February of 2017. Sadly, Jose would never get to see the birth of his child. On September 25th, 2016, Jose was in a bad mood. He decided to blow off some steam with a late night boat ride with friends Eddie Riviero and Emilio Macias. He invited close friend Will Bernal to join them, but Will actually tried to talk them out of the idea. Sadly, they didn't heed his advice. The boat crashed, ending the lives of Jose, Eddie, and Emilio. The city of Miami held a public memorial and funeral for Jose on September 28th, and the Marlins announced they would retire number 16 in his honor. That's for the rest of the story. Well, the rest of the story lives on through his friends, his family, his loved ones, and his gameplay because this is before they were dead. My name is Michael McCredden. Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Um, where you were when you heard this news, prayers, condolences, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, okay guys, really sad one. A lot of you guys requested this video, so I'm thankful I can get it done. And I'm really sweaty because, well, we're trying to make this as quick as possible. All right guys, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in another video.